What's up everyone? Ryan here, Rhino411, checking back in with another video update. So, the theme of this video is first race weekend on the R6. My last, we'll say, attempt to race the R6, we'll say, did not, did not go so well. For any of you that saw my last update, made it out to Pittsburgh, but mechanical issues seemed to follow me all the way to Pennsylvania, so I wasn't able to race. Only got a couple sessions in, but we were able to regroup. Guys over at Turn One Racing were able to get things sorted out, and I was finally able to get on track with the R6. This was the first weekend I've really just been able to concentrate on riding the bike for me, on racing the bike. So to bring you guys up to speed, I had two days on the R6 at Barber Motorsports Park in March. That was new track, new suit, new bike, everything, just kind of taking it all in. Then I had a day where I did some control riding on the bike, so wasn't really riding for me, wasn't concentrating on that, but just kind of going around, doing the control rider thing. So this is the first opportunity that I had to finally feel how the bike should be set up for me, have the bike in, you know, what it's meant to be in the right application, which is racing. So I went into the weekend with the intent to, first of all, <laughs> get through the first day. So I had the practice day on Friday and I kept my goal, goals for the weekend pretty conservative because I know I had obviously a lot to learn. The R6 and the middleweight class is way different than the lightweight class that I ran before. And I found out there's a lot of ways it's a lot more different than I realized, but we'll get to that. So like I said, I kept my goal pretty conservative for the weekend. Obviously, I just wanted to get some racing under my belt, get some seat time on the bike. I didn't want to make too many changes on the bike because it's my first weekend on it. I didn't really want to mess with it. Like I went in with the intention to make as little changes as possible unless something just felt completely off. You know, like I, I couldn't turn the bike or something crazy was happening where this just, I couldn't get through the weekend comfortably. Well, one, I want to beat my, my PR time on the SV, which was a 16.3, I think, 16.4, somewhere around there. And beyond that, I wanted to, you know, at least get into the 14s comfortably. As I went through the morning practices, obviously I was just getting acclimated on the bike. It's the first time I've been on the bike, you know, with the, the new Bridgestone VO2s that I was getting used to at a track that I actually know. So this is gonna be a really good baseline test for me. And I believe by like my third session, I was able to click down into the 15s. So at the end of practice, I wanted to be somewhere in that realm, and I was. So, tick that first box, and I ended up having Joe over at Turn 1 make just a couple minor adjustments on the bike just because it felt like it was, it was moving through the stroke a little fast in some spots where I felt like I couldn't get off and back on throttle. So I had to make a couple minor adjustments, and then it felt like it went too far in the other direction, so I had him basically split the difference. And that's really the only change we made to the bike all weekend. So, like I said, I went in with that intent to not really mess with it because I wanted to get a full weekend un under my belt. And that was all we did for changes. Now, rolling into Saturday, first day of races, <clears throat> I, I only had two races on the docket for that day. Unfortunately, the way the weather was looking too, the majority of my races were gonna be on Sunday, which is when the rain was supposed to come. So I wanted to try and get in as much quality race time and seat time on the bike as possible. This is also my first weekend with the new CCS and Azure rules. So the, the series that I run in had new owners take over and they're running things a little bit differently. And one of those changes that they had implemented is qualifying. So our second practice session, session in the morning was also qualifying. So we were gonna set our grids based on our qualifying times. Obviously I wanted to have good qualifying and I went out in that session, was feeling really good on the bike. You know, I was feeling really good each session. So my plan was in the morning during first practice, I was gonna use the scrub tires that I had on the bike from the day before and actually from Barber. So up until practice session two, I'd been running the same tires since Barber in March. Still plenty of life left on them, but just for that mental edge and just to give me that best um, 
best opportunity to, to go as fast as I could. I, I put on a brand new set for qualifying or practice two. And I ended up setting my best lap in that session was like a 14.3, 14.4, somewhere right around there. I'll flash it up on the screen officially so you can see that the numbers. And I was really happy with that. I ended up in, I believe, like the seventh spot on the, or the sixth spot right on the second, it was either second or third row. But I was happy with that, and I wasn't way in the back of the grid. It was a decent showing. I was kind of in the middle of the experts. Now, the the grids weren't as full, like a lot of the normal runners that we have that can really click those quick times, like, uh, you know, 109s at Blackhawk, 110s, what have you. Some of them weren't there. But overall, like I said, my goal for the weekend was just to be in the 14s. So the fact that I clicked off, you know, like a lower 14, like 14.3, 14.4, made me feel really good for the race because typically in uh, a race setting, you're gonna go faster. Now, this being qualifying, I obviously tried to push some in qualifying, but it, it was funny because throughout the day on practice and qualifying, I never felt like I was really pushing, which is really cool. And I'm gonna get in that a bit more, but that's one thing I, I really felt throughout the whole weekend, which was really nice. So anyways, got through qualifying and my first race was gonna be middleweight super sport and lined up on the grid. And the other thing I, I'll, I'll have to back up real quick. The one other thing I did also go through in practice that I haven't done on this bike yet is practice starts. And the R6 launches way differently than the SV. It feels like I'm wringing its neck, like it's way too high, but that's where it's gotta be. And I did, did a few starts and it felt okay. I knew that was gonna be my weak point which is kind of opposite of before, like strong, uh, my strong point before, you know, was my starts. I was always really good off the line on the SV. And, you know, I went out on the warm-up lap for super sport. I was really nervous, needless to say, partly because it was my first middleweight race. And also, Natalie, my wife, wasn't there and she's normally there for all my races. So it just felt weird having my first ever race on the 600 class, like on the R6 without her being there. And of course the race right before mine, there was a red flag and there was a delay. So, you know, I just had to wait even longer. But finally when we rolled out, like with anything, as soon as I put the visor down, roll it on my warm-up lap, we're all good. Now, my start was awful. My start was appalling. It was bad. Probably one of the worst starts I've ever had just really slow off the line. What I need to work on moving forward is not just letting the clutch go out so abruptly and it just drops the RPMs and just blah, bogs. I gotta feed it out a bit longer. So I know that for the next round, but that's basically what happened. And I had to play catch through the whole race, lost a bunch of positions, but I got into a little bit of a rhythm. Uh, I caught up to, a, to another rider and strategized the way to ground him, ended up getting around him, finished the race, and felt really good. Ended up with a 14 flat on my last lap. I was like, I just couldn't give me that 13, nine, 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 whatever. But again, I didn't feel like I was pushing. And I actually felt like I was honestly riding pretty sloppy, partly because I was trying to catch up from that bad start. So I had a good mindset and a good plan going into GTU, which was my next race. So it's our 25 minute longer race. And you know, honestly, after the, my first race, it was like, you know, that first day of school or first day on a job, you're all nervous. Then you do that first class, you go through that first day and you're like, oh, it wasn't so bad. Now, GTU, my start was slightly better, not much better. Still feeding the clutch out too quick, bike bogged lost more positions, didn't lose as many, but still lost positions. And had a good battle working my way up through the field. Uh, I ended up passing four or five riders and I believe I finished in the sixth spot overall. So that's really cool. But to back up a little bit, I also set my fastest times of the weekend with a new personal best of a 113.3, which 
it was weird. I was over the moon about it on one hand because you know, I set my goal to just be 14s. I kind of thought I could do 13s, but I didn't want to, you know, I wanted to under promise over deliver basically. But the flip side of that, as happy as I was, is I felt like I definitely could have done 12s, you know, because, you know, I was working my way up through the field and again, I still just felt like I was riding sloppy and I, I wasn't pushing hard. I was just kind of clicking off laps, riding around, obviously strategizing how to get around people and getting used to that because it's a lot different on the 600. But like I said, I was able to make it work. I got past each rider, I, I studied them for a lap or two and then made my way by. And as I was going through my laps, you know, I wasn't really worried necessarily that they were gonna overtake me again because I was able to study them and see where I could push more. And like I said, I was able to click off basically a string of, I was somewhere in the 14s and 13s that whole race. And somewhere around mid races when I did that 13 or three, my last couple laps, once I passed uh, the last rider that I ended up overtaking, I had some higher 13s and ended up bringing it home. Now, like I said, the next day it ended up raining, so I didn't get a chance to try and better those times. But you know, I can I know we all say stuff like this is racers, but I can tell you with like certainty that I definitely would have been in the 12s the next day just because of how how I felt in those races. You know, I, like I said, I didn't feel like I was pushing so hard, like, oh my gosh, how am I gonna keep this pace up? I'm pushing so hard at the very limit. I just felt like I was out there clicking off laps, riding, doing my thing. And I could see time on the table everywhere. And the biggest thing that I have to work on, one, is just still getting on the, the throttle harder and sooner. So I'm still getting used to that power delivery on the bike. And also my line choices. And I noticed in practice when I was taking the lines I would take on the SV in certain spots, I would run wide. And I thought that was really weird, but I remember, you know, all the guys at Turnham were telling me that, you know, the bike is much more point and shoot versus like the SV since it has so little horsepower in comparison. You've really got to arc your way through the corners, keep your speed up, whereas on the R6 on middleweights, you know, maybe not all middleweights, but at least in the R6's case, you're gonna kind of V the corner a bit more. So you're gonna try and dive it in hard, fire it out hard. And again, it's as I think about it now, it's really weird to me because in the past, all these new things that I would have had to do, I would have definitely struggled with. Like I would have only been able to do one of those things at once. It would have overwhelmed me mentally. I would have struggled with it. But it was just, the weekend was just weird because I, anytime I was given some input or a tip or a pointer, I just went and started doing it. Now, I'm not saying I did it perfectly or I did it well, because obviously there's room to improve, tons of room to improve, but I was able to just kind of start doing those things without having to think about it too much. You know, for instance, coming out of turn six at Blackhawk, on the SV, I would normally kind of arc the corner and then run through what's called 6A or 6 silo. On the R6, you kind of roll on, then you roll off a bit, and then, then throw the bike in. If I did that on the ASV, I'd lose a ton of time. But I just started doing it on the R6, and it, and it helped me a ton. Same thing with what my line choices going into, say, turn one and turn seven. It's much more you, you get the bike in late and hard, brake hard, and then you fire it out. It's just getting used to that. But like I said, it was so weird that I was just kind of able to do it. And yeah, even thinking about it now, it's weird because there's all these different factors that I can think of that in the past I would have struggled with, with how the bike feels under braking because it, you know, I can feel it moving around a bit more and my line choice and how hard I'm braking and how the power is delivered and how I'm having to ride the bike from an ergonomic standpoint and how I'm having to ride the bike from a line choice standpoint. And it's, it's just weird as I sit and think about it, how I was just able to just go do it and start doing it. Again, no, I'm not doing it all perfectly, not, not even close, but yeah, it's just weird how I was just able to do it. And when I was talking to Natalie about it, she said, you know, when the, she thinks I've, you know, obviously I've, she's like, I guess, you know, she thinks I've really learned a lot 
from coming off the SV, and I've grown a lot as a racer and as a rider over the last year or two. And I honestly think if I hadn't transitioned onto this other bike, I wouldn't have seen that or known that because I would have just been doing the same old thing on the SV. So it's really, it's really uplifting to me to see that. And I'm really, really enthusiastic to, and really excited for the next round to get back out on the bike and see what I can do. Because I think I can definitely hit some, some 12s the next round and have an even better race weekend because my starts are gonna be better for sure. Definitely gonna work on those more. And I guess I know what I need to do to fix them. And it's just weird how now everything feels um, felt almost automatic is what I told Natalie, where someone said something, go do this, boom, I went and did it. You know, I know I, what I need to do to fix my starts. I need to stop beating the clutch out so quickly. I'm gonna go do that. So yeah, it's it's been, been weird. And it's coming from the lightweight realm. I still, it's funny, I, I don't know that I feel like I'm a middleweight racer yet. Like if someone's gonna seem like, oh yeah, that guy, that's Ryan, it's on R6, he races middleweight. Like I'm starting to feel that. And I think I will more after this next round, depending on how things go. But yeah, it was just, like I said, it was a really positive weekend because I only got two races in and I beat my goal. I, I clicked off a low 13 and I was running 13s, 14s. But yeah, it was just weird because I, I thought deep down, you know, I could I could do it. Like I knew going into this, it was gonna be a challenge, but I, I know I can roll well on this bike and I can do well on it. But it was just weird how things just kind of happened. And again, there's always room to improve. I've got a lot of room to improve, but I definitely exceeded my expectations for the weekend. A few other people even said, you know, they didn't expect me to really be where I was at the end of this first weekend considering the limited time I've had on the bike due to you know a lot of these random mechanical issues because in, I mean in total I've and granted a lot of them would have been control riding days but I've missed out on around eight to ten days of riding on the bike since the year started so like I said I had the two days at Barber at a track I don't know I had a day of control riding and I had a couple less than two sessions at Pitt and I had a couple sessions at Road America and that was it. I haven't really had time on the bike, so to speak. At least at a track I know, like Blackhawk, in a realm where I, I can just focus on my riding. So, yeah. So I guess just to recap everything, it was a positive weekend, like I said, but it was it was a very, very weird, in a good way. But now we're prepping for the next round, which is another Blackhawk round. It's going to be interesting because the Bagger Racing League is going to be there, so it's going to be a jam-packed, crazy weekend. The cool thing is there's going to be a lot of spectators out. I'm hoping to see a lot of you out there. If you're interested in coming, I'll have the information on the race weekend below. I'd love to see some people come out. Every single person I've brought out to the track has loved it, and it's exceeded their expectations. And we need to get more people out to the track and checking out this racing because the racing is good. It's great. It's people that you know. It's close racing. It's it's hard racing, it's fun racing, and you can get a lot more access and get closer than you can with any other series. So that being said, I do have to give a shout out as always, always to my awesome and amazing sponsors for all of their support. I could not do this without you. You know, having you on my corner was definitely like huge for me this, this past weekend. Could not do it without all of your support. If you are interested in getting on board with, with me, with Rhino Racing, please reach out to me. I'm looking for some partners for this season to transition into next season as I make that step up into Moto America. Love to talk to you. And I, like I said, I really hope if you see this video and you haven't been out to one of our races, you should definitely come out to this round in July. It's gonna be a ton of fun. I'd love to see you there. And hopefully you'll get to see me do my thing and uh, we'll keep improving and you'll see better starts from me. So. That's all I've got for now. Like I said, next round's coming up soon. Really excited for it. I appreciate you all checking out the video. If you liked what you saw, I'd really appreciate you giving me a like. If you want to see some more videos and not miss anything, please feel free to subscribe. It means a lot to me. I love putting out these videos and sharing everything. Also, if you're interested in getting into racing or track riding, please hit me up and let me know. One of my favorite things that I love doing is helping people and helping people with something that I'm super passionate about, like riding and racing motorcycles is just icing on the cake to me. So 
you're interested, please reach out to me. I've had tons of friends that I've helped get on track just through track days or even start racing, and I'd love to help you as well. So that's all I've got for now. Like I said, it's Ryan here, Rhino Racing, signing off for now. Thanks.